Okay, before we get started today, I wanted to show you something. It's not part of the, you're not going to be tested over this, but it's kind of fun. Uh, <clears throat> upper dispersion, dispersion in a sphere. Okay, remember I told you when light enters a medium, it has an angle, so my hand is the boundary between one medium and another medium, okay? And when the light comes in here, it hits the boundary, it bends, right? because it slows down in one medium. Does all light slow down the same amount? No. Different colors slow down at different rates. Is that, you're okay with that, right? More or less. Or is more or less okay with it. We'll take your word for it. No. You can push the I believe button. And, okay, yeah. Okay. It does. <laughs> and if you were to have yourself a sphere of a different medium, and light came into it, it would bend at this point, right? Okay? And as it bent, different parts of it would be bent different amounts. Okay? So the red wouldn't bend as much as the purple. Okay? Do you see that? And, and, and then notice what that does then. That splits up this white light into all the colors. And we call this dispersion. Okay? Does that make sense? Because it disperses the light. Okay? And then this dispersed light hits the back edge of this and bounces. And so when it bounces, it flips. And then it disperses again when it exits. Okay? So this makes sense? You look at this and you say, that's uh, interesting. Why would I possibly care about such silliness? Before I show you why you would care about such silliness, um, well, I'll, I'll tell you right here. I'm not going to give you all the pieces just yet. Here we go. Say, oh, it tells you we're talking about rainbows. <clears throat> okay, so if you're standing there, okay, and you happen to see a raindrop, a pair of raindrops, the sun is back here. Okay, so the sun is way back behind you. You will never see a rainbow with the sun in front of you. You will always, whenever you see a rainbow over there, the sun will be behind you. Okay? They will never be in the same location. A rainbow. You may see a sun dog. And that's a whole other story. Rainbows first. <clears throat> so the light is coming from behind you, and so the light is hitting you in the back of the head. But while the light is hitting you in the back of the head, uh, it's also coming into each of these raindrops that are spheres in the sky. And so when it comes in, that one, it reflects and does its dispersion thing. And it comes, and so up there, you see red from that upper raindrop. From this raindrop, it's going to do its dispersion thing. The same light is going to come and hit this rain raindrop at the same time, and you're going to see the purple from this raindrop. So all the raindrops in between are going to show you the other colors. So this is how you see a rainbow. Okay? This is why you see rainbows, is because um, the upper one most is you're seeing red from it, and the lower one most you're seeing purple from it. So it's kind of flipped. Yeah. Yeah. So does this kind of make sense? I'll show you a better picture in a second, but I want to show you that the that was. Do you remember what that one was called? Primary. This is a primary rainbow, but this is this is called upper dispersion in a sphere. And I told you what dispersion is, and you already know what a sphere is. Upper. Upper implies there must also be a lower. I'm glad you asked. So tonight, now we're going to talk about lower dispersion. Okay. Okay, that's weird. Okay, so you also get lower dispersion in the spheres, and it's the same sort of thing. The light comes in only instead of hitting the top part of the light, of the it both is happening. Okay, on all raindrops, but if you only see the light coming from the lower part, it'll hit here, disperse, reflect, reflect, come out, spread out. Okay, this one's not as bright. Why wouldn't this be one be as bright? Because the light is not as um strong, its energy has been taken, taken. At each reflection, you lose some. Okay, because what happens is, it comes in here, and 
it hits here and reflects, some of it actually goes out there. Okay. But you only see the part that reflects twice. So the end result is, uh, there's you again, lights coming from there. From the upper rainbow, upper part of the rainbow, you see purple. From the lower part, you see red. Is this the same as what you saw last time? It's exactly the opposite. Does this ever happen in real life? Why, of course it does. Oh, that one's at 51 degrees, by the way. The other one's at 42. 42, 51. There, we're talking about two different rainbows. One is higher than the other. Whenever you've looked at a rainbow, have you ever seen a double rainbow? They exist sometimes. Sometimes you can see a double rainbow. Here's a nice picture of a double rainbow. You get the light so you can see it better. <coughs> See that? Yes, sir. Double rainbow. Oh. And notice the up order of the colors is flipped. This is the way it always works. Are you sure I didn't notice that? Well? So, if you're standing right there, you're never going to see a rainbow. If you're standing right next to it, it's all, <laughs> it's all basically it's all perspective. If, if you were here, you would be getting wet. Because <laughs> the reason you see a rainbow there is because that's where the water droplets are. And you only see it is because you are outside of the rain, looking at the rain, and the sun is behind you. So therefore, if you are digging up gold... You can try to follow the rainbow all you want, but you will never get to the end of the rainbow, because it's always got to be ahead of you. And we're always got to be 41 degrees up. But it's kind of cool, uh, if you're in an airplane, uh, flying, and the sun is above you, and you look down and see clouds below you, you can see rainbows oh, below yeah. you, and they're a circle. You see the whole thing. It's just a big circle. It's neat. pretty awesome. And it's exactly at 41 degrees all, all the way around. It's pretty neat. Definitely. Not always, but sometimes you can see if the rain has been, if the rain is thrown up above the cloud, sometimes you can see it in the clouds themselves. It, you only conditions. see it once from one. Yeah, certain conditions. It's pretty high, too. I've seen it at, as low as 3,000 feet. Okay. Um, but it's 3,000 feet. Yeah. It's not the ultimate. You know, I just jump that high every day, right? Yeah. Anyway, that was a total aside. I just thought it was kind of fun. That is kind of cool. <laughs> so you should be looking for the double rainbows. Mm -hmm. you, I, you can, about half the time that you see a rainbow, you can see the double rainbow. Really? But it's faint. It's always real faint. So most people don't know to look for it. And it's always above the one that's obvious. It looks like a reflection almost. It does, but it's, it's not. It's, a, it's the upper dispersion and lower dispersion. And so when you see, when you see the double ring, you can say, hey, look, I see the lower dispersion. <clears throat> okay, now back to what we are supposed to talk about. Which are cool in their own right. Um, <clears throat> this is a uh, convex or converging lens. Uh, this one's called biconvex. What does the bi mean? Two. Two. Um, so really, um, a flat side and a. Like, this is a converging lens. But this is a biconverging. That's actually a symmetrical biconverging lens. <clears throat> if you look at most people's glasses, it's actually messy. Uh, they'll have a converging lens on one side, and then a diverging lens on the other side. And so they're, they're most real lenses that you, that you see are not symmetrical. For the purposes of this class, you will only deal with symmetrical lenses. Why? Because why would I say? Because it's much easier. This is a whole, right? This is how this works. You're, you're getting started with step one. Step one is easy. Step two is a little bit harder. Step three is a little bit harder. Each level, just a little bit harder. And the best part, each level is a little bit closer to reality. And that's our goal, right? To describe reality. Okay? So by the time you get done with grad school, You'll be, you'll be really close to reality. 
how high do you have to get so you would see exactly reality? It, it doesn't happen. Yeah. Some things are extremely close. Um, our descriptions of light generally are pretty close to reality, but everything's got some issues. Anyway, so uh, there are there's two kinds of lenses I told you. The first one is a uh, converging lens. And let me show you what that looks like over here. I will find myself a converging lens. Um, as shown in the picture, a bi-converging lens. I told you this is a, a new toy, right? I play with this toy. I don't know for sure how this is going to work, so we'll see how this goes. Somebody doesn't chop your hand off. Jonas, could you plug the other end of the orange cord and call me? Can we turn the lights off too? Uh, let's see how this looks. Oh, that's pretty good. Can you see that, Sarah? Look at that. Beautiful. Bi converging lens. And right there is the focus point. So, what we've got here this is a laser beam. It's sending in five parallel lasers. It hits the lens, and the lens refocuses all the lasers to that point. Okay? And, and if you change the... Um, the, con the curve of how, how, uh, how curved it is, the convexness of it, it'll change the position of, the, of that point. What happens if you put both of them at the same time? Converging lens. Okay with y'all? There's another kind of lens. What was it? Diverging. Diverging. What do you think that does? Spreads it up. Diverges the light. Let's see if we got a few of these. Diverging lens. Oh, oh where's the focus point on such a thing? Okay. Where, I mean, is there a focus point? No. You can't say you can turn the lights. Uh, is there a focus point? Uh, yeah. <coughs> Not in reality. But for practical purposes, we need a focus point. We've got to have one because the math requires a focus point. Now you, as I told you before, you're not going to have to deal with the math with this class. Next physics class you take, you will deal with the math. And the focus point is, see how these disperse, they diverge here? Well, where those lines would converge, which would be over here somewhere, that would be the focus point. Okay. In fact, you can probably see it. We have all the lights off. I think I can kind of see it's right up there. It's a, it's a reflection off the ceiling. Okay. Are you okay with this? Make sense? Um, so here we have diverging, and then we can put slightly converging back and parallel again. Pretty close, anyway. Maybe it's slightly different. Converging to diverging. Okay, anyway, there you go. Is this, you able to tell this? Um, okay, we'll, we'll come back to the fun toy in a minute. Um, is there anything you want Okay, uh, next picture is just for fun. <coughs> How is it that this guy is holding his head in his hand? Because he has a fake head. <laughs> because the water he has a spelling story. issue is what he has. Because 
the light is, is uh, bending, because the water is bending the light? We don't call it bending. What do we call it? Distorting. No. Um, For all practical purposes, it is indeed bending. But that's not the fancy word. You've got to use the fancy word. Refraction. Refraction is a fancy word. Okay. The light is refracting from the pool. Okay? So the light coming off of this guy's body here goes, it travels in a straight line through the pool. But when it reaches that boundary between the pool and the air, it bends. So his body is actually beneath his head. Okay? But because the light from his body bent when it entered the air, it looks to our eye and to the camera's eye like his body's over here. Okay. Does that make sense? And the light from his head never had to refract because it just went from air to air. There's no refraction there. But it looks for all the world like he's holding, holding his head on his hand. Okay, rules for ray tracing. I gave you the rules for ray tracing with mirrors. I'm going to give you the rules for ray tracing with lenses. Okay? They will be extremely similar, but slight variations. Okay? Are you ready? Uh, step one is, as it was before, draw the optical axis. Uh, so let me start doing this. <coughs> which is nothing more than a straight line. And how do you draw your optical axis? Just freehand it like I just did. No, the ruler. Perfect. Must use a ruler. Make it straight. Then you draw the thin lens. Now, at this point you want a perfectly perpendicular line. Okay? So you need to make a perfectly perpendicular line. How would you make a perfectly perpendicular line? Protractor's certainly a way to do this. Triangle? It's probably the easiest way. There's other ways. If you take a drafting class, you'll learn about how to use a compass to make a particular line. I don't even want to know. I'll show you. Did you just say you don't want to know? Yeah. Good. Let me show you anyway. <laughs> Transparency paper, mm. which is a compass. I don't know. I think our compass is for. Okay. So I'm going to draw my optical axis. And now I want the. I put my pointy end on the paper in two places. I'm going to make a mark. That point, that I stuck this pointy mark here, here. Okay. Now notice what I did. I have two points. A point here, where I stuck my needle, and a point here, where I stuck my needle. And I drew myself a thin lens. A biconvex lens. And, what's more, here's the best part. These ends where, where they cross. a line that is perfectly perpendicular. If you were to use your protractor, you can measure it and see uh, that is indeed a perpendicular line. Okay? Does that make sense how to do it now? Now, you'll, you're going to want to do that because you, you're going to need to know where is your, um, your center point because what does the center point do for you? The center of the circle. I guess your radius. And how do you Go from there to, how is that useful? Uh, half of the radius is the 
what we call it? Focus, focus point. point. Okay. So what I can do now is I can measure. I'm gonna, we, we cheat when we do this. Okay. Here's how this works. We're going to measure from the line, not from the edge of the lens, from the line. Okay. And so I'm going to draw this line here and measure it. This one is. Uh, From here to here is 5.8, 5.82, so that means my focus point is half of that, which will be 2.91. Yeah, sounds about right. Uh, 2.91. So right here is the center and right here is the focus point. Okay, do you see how that went? Notice, did not measure from the edge of the lens, I measured from the line that goes through the middle of it. Why? <coughs> this is a beautiful question. Assume them to be a line. Okay. If they are not actually thin, the math gets incredibly complex and very messy. Okay. And that's a class for a later day. So all the lenses in this class will be thin. That's not thin though. There is an angle to it. You are assuming <laughs> this is a thin lens. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, you just have to, you must, all I these, mean, all these ray tracing rules are null and void if this is not actually a thin lens. So, but wouldn't a thin lens just be like a piece of glass? Say if it's no, what well, it has to be thin is thin. that, let's see if I can remember the criteria for a thin lens. The thickness of the lens has to be much, much less than the object, than the distance away from the object you're looking at. Uh, okay. And for most of the things we're talking about, this is a pretty reasonable assumption. Okay, so basically, you could call a lens that's a foot high thin if it's a long 50 way. feet from the object. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Cool. <laughs> Okay, so we've drawn the optical axis, we've drawn the lens, and that lens is perpendicular. Okay, and now you draw, you find the radius and the focal point, I showed you that over there, and now you draw your object. Okay, so I guess I'll do this on the board here. Let's see, I've got my lens, I've got my, radi my focal point and my radius center point, whatever you want to call it, and I'll put an object over here, there we go, here's my object, and objects all look alike. <laughs> and uh, now you draw your three known lines, but here's the catch. This is where this is different from what we did on the mirror, on the mirror we only care about the these two points on this side of the mirror. With the lens, we care about these same two points on the other side of the lens. Okay, because remember, that's where they converge, not on this side. They converge right here. Okay, so we gotta find this focus point over here and the radius over here. So, first option, parallel to the optical axis. And where does it go when it comes in parallel? It hits the focus. If they come in parallel, they will go through the focus point. Okay, so this is going to go, it's going to bend, and it's going to go down through there. 
Notice I bent it at the line in the middle. Why should we bend it at the line? Shouldn't it start bending when it enters the lens? Why do we bend it at the line? Because that is the lens. Because it is a thin lens. <laughs> I promise. It's thin. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> and this, this pen is dead. <clears throat> and then the focal point. So I'm going to go through this point here. through the optical axis, lens axis intersection, which is right here. So I'm going to send it right through that point there. And then it's going to go up there. So my image is going to be right here. And there we go. Okay? Now, I want to remind you, every single time you see an upside down image, what does that tell you? It's real. This is indeed a real image. Okay? Does that make sense? If it is right side up, what kind of image is it? The, 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 the real word is imaginary, but I guess it's I guess it's fake. I mean it's really an image. It's just not real. Not real. Which doesn't make sense. <laughs> it just means you can't put it on the screen. Okay? Does this make sense, everybody? You're alright with that? Those two definitions. Upside down, guaranteed you can put it on the screen. It's a real image. Right side up, you can't put it on the screen. That's called a virtual or imaginary image. Okay. So it's just that's what it's called. It's not that it's imaginary. You can see it with your eyeball, but you could not put it on the screen. Okay. Have you ever looked at the back side of a spoon? You see your picture in the spoon. What does the picture look like? It's you. Fish eye. It's a fish eye spoon. I mean, it's going to look like a fish eye mirror, right? So you'll see yourself. Uh, where are, you, are you right side up or upside down? You're right side up. You're right side up. You cannot project that onto a screen any way you wanted to. If you tried, you could not project it onto a screen. Why? Because it's diverging. It's a, the, the, <clears throat> the back of the spoon is here light from your face comes over here as the spoon bounces off. The light will diverge. If, it wants, if you want to focus it into an image, it's got to be focused to a point. So from your brain's perspective, it's going to look like all the light came from over here. And so your brain's going to think, I'm back there. But there's not actually an image there. You can't put a piece of paper here and have an image of your face on that piece of paper. So the light went over there. But from your eyeball's perspective over here, that's your eyeball, okay. Just pretend with me, okay? That's your eyeball. This is like your eyelashes right here, okay? And that's the pupil. That's even worse. <laughs> that's your eyeball. From your eyeball's perspective, you see where the light came from. Your brain does this to you. It plays tricks on you all the time. Mean brain. Your brain assumes light travels in a straight line, always. It doesn't actually. It bends sometimes. But your brain assumes it goes in a straight line. So that your nice? brain will see an image of you over here, even though there's not actually an image of you over here. So you really see it, but it's not a real image. Would it cause problems for us if it didn't? Well, that's a good question. I don't know. What? I said our brain assumes uh -huh. light travels in a straight line. Yeah. Would it cause problems for us if our brain did not assume such things? And my guess is it would be problematic because we wouldn't ever see anything. Because almost always light does travel in a straight line. Like from me seeing you to my eye, that, all that light travels in a nice straight line. And I see it, it's really nice. But if I assumed that it didn't travel in a straight line, that, you, that light went over there and came over here and some of it came over here, like I'd see Corey like all over the place. And... Not problematic. Okay. <laughs>